I put this together because lately Democrats have been talking a lot, especially presidential candidates, uh, about rich people and about billionaires. In fact, it seems like every presidential debate, they're taking another shot at a billionaire. And recently, uh, Bernie Sanders, AOC, even other presidential candidates have weighed in saying things like, no one deserves to be a billionaire and there should be no such thing as billionaires. And that's fine. I mean, envy is an old thing and taking shots at rich people is not new. The problem is that they have taken to referencing the Bible a couple of times. And I've heard a couple say, well, in the Bible, it says the money is the root of all evil. And the fact is, that's not what the Bible says. Uh, the verse that they are sort of indiscriminately referencing is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, in which it says, love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. And so there's a couple subtleties here that are really important. In fact, that section in which Paul is writing to uh, Timothy, he's not just talking about money. He's talking about all things that can potentially draw you away from living a spiritual or a servant life. In fact, leading up to this, you just go a few verses earlier in uh, verse four in that same chapter, Paul warns against those who have an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dissension, slander, evil suspicions, and constant friction. Then in 6, 9, with, just before the, the verse about money, he says, those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. So he's warning that these things can draw those who pursue wealth away from a Christian life. Uh, then he goes on to say, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Now, I appreciate that Democrats are really thoughtful and they're worrying about the spiritual health of billionaires, but I frankly don't think that is the root of this position. Instead, they are doing exactly what the first part of Tim's uh, I'm sorry, if Paul's message is in Timothy, they are using language, using words to drive dissension, to drive slander, and to drive hatred, all to drive a political agenda. It shows a massive lack of understanding, both frankly, of economics and of spiritual life. If you get into economics for a second, in the free market system, the idea is that it's not about pursuit of money. It's that because you can have free trade, money is a measure of value. Because when I decide to exchange money for something, that thing is worth more than the money. And whoever is exchanging the money uh, for the thing, the, the money's worth more to them. So value is created in that exchange. If you want to inspire your children to create something big that's gonna have a positive impact on the world, you know that it's valuable because people are willing to pay for it. Therefore, accumulating wealth because you've created that value, you've created that service is a good thing. It's something we should charge our children to do. Good for them for creating those things. I mean, if your child, you know, creates something that cures breast cancer or relieves traffic problems or, you know, somehow feeds a whole group of people cheaper than we could before, don't, wouldn't you be proud of them for becoming a billionaire because they invented that or started a business that provides that? I think you would, I think I would. And so therefore being a billionaire in its essence is not wrong. Now let's go back to faith. What does the church actually teach us about being rich? I mean, there are these lines. In fact, there's another line in the Bible, uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 24, in which Jesus says, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, which is for many, another reference that says, you know, being rich is, is, is impossible. You can't be rich and be faithful. However, if you go a little further in that gospel of Matthew, uh, the, the disciples kind of in shock ask Jesus, well, who can then be saved? Which is an interesting thing because you know, the disciples weren't wealthy. They had all given up every earthly possession to follow Jesus. So why would they be worried about this? I think it comes back to the same idea is simply having wealth, you know, is, is that a sin? Does that preclude you from being close to God? Jesus answers this and he says, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And that's a little bit of a cryptic answer. To understand it, we have to go back a little further into Matthew. In chapter six, Matthew is talking, Jesus is talking about treasures and he's telling people, you can't pursue treasures on earth. Or you should pursue treasures on earth. You should pursue treasures in heaven. And in talking about this, 
He says, because no, no one can serve two masters. He says, for either he will hate the one and love the other or will be devoted to one and despise the other. He says, you cannot serve God and money. You see, when you think about this idea of pursuing money, loving money, serving money, the problem is not having it, it's making it your sole priority. You know, in fact, you know, all of us in life have different resources, have different talents, have different skills. And the question is not what do we have and whether or not that's fair, it's how are we putting those things to use for God? One of my favorite Bible verses is Luke chapter 12, verse 48, in which, once again, Jesus is talking and he says, uh, to whom much was given, of him much will be required. So when I think about wealth, especially in days of inflation, when you know today a billion dollars is equivalent to what ten million dollars was just you know a little over a hundred years ago. So you can't use absolute dollars. You have to say to those who have the most wealth, to them God has given a specific charge. How are you using that wealth to serve me and to serve your fellow man? And so, you know, I think my wife and I have been very blessed. Our family has been blessed because my parents uh, were both teachers. We didn't have a lot of extra money. And yet, because we started a couple of businesses, we have been very blessed. I feel constantly the, the pressure or the charge to use those blessings in a way that serves my fellow man and serves God. And it brings us back to the discussion, well, what about, okay, well, if that's the case, maybe we can just take it, right? In other words, if they're supposed to use that wealth to serve God, why won't they just give it up? Why won't they just let it go? Why won't, why can't we, the government, we, the people through government, just take it? Well, there was a book um, written a few years ago called When Helping Hurts, and it was written by a couple of men about all of the billions of dollars that are donated from Western culture to Africa, and that most of those dollars do not only not help, they're actually destructive because they undermine local economies, they undermine local esteem, they destroy local agriculture and textile industries because they just take the money that we give them and no longer are those things valuable. Uh, and back to the United States, if we said, okay, fine, let's just go take everything that they have. And so right now in the United States, there's about 600 billionaires. And if we went and said, all right, it's okay, government, go take everything those billionaires have, every single dime. 600 billionaires versus $23 trillion in national debt. If you took every dime those billionaires have, it wouldn't even cover one-tenth of our national debt. So you say, okay, well, yeah, it still would be though 10%. Well, then where does it stop? Because you still got $19 trillion, $20 trillion in debt. What do you do about that? Well, let's just take the next round of rich people, right? I mean, some people have 800 million. That's a lot. Let's take theirs. And some people have 500 million. Let's just take theirs. Well, in order to get to the point that you could actually pay off our national debt, you'd have to go to the 4 million wealthiest families in the country and take half of what they own. Then you could pay off the national debt. 4 million families. And now you're talking about people whose total net worth is, you know, six, seven, eight million dollars. Now, granted, that's still a lot of money, but if you had that kind of money and someone just said, we're just going to take half of it, not because it's right or because there's some sort of principle, but just because that's what it's going to take to balance Take those from those who have and give to those who don't. Well, now imagine you're a kid again and you're trying to encourage them to invent something new. You're trying to develop something awesome. You're trying to get them to invent a new technology to start a business. And if they make it a little bit, then make it okay, great, you're fine. But if you make it too rich, then know that the government and the rest of the people will come and take whatever it is that you have. Is that the message that we want to send? I think that that would not only not be good for those 4 million families, I think it would absolutely destroy the foundational principle of free market and of opportunity in our country. And so I hope that this message about what the Bible teaches and what wealth is, is not misconstrued. Having wealth is not bad. It's loving wealth that is bad. And yeah, we should absolutely urge each other and urge ourselves to give everything we have, everything we can to serve our fellow man, but that does not mean giving it to government. Simply saying that we're gonna trade a bunch of powerful rich people for a bunch of powerful bureaucrats is not gonna make anything better. However, saying that how do we as a people serve each other, that's a challenge all of us can get around. So instead of persecuting the 600 billionaires or the real richest in our society, let's simply ask, what else can you do to help? And thank you for whatever all of you do.